Hello, welcome to Children's Time. How many of you have a library card? I've got mine, and as you can see, it's pretty well worn. And anybody can get one of these library cards. It doesn't matter if you're a boy or a girl, young or old, it doesn't matter what the color of your skin is, is it white, brown, red, yellow, or black? It doesn't matter who your parents are. It doesn't matter where you're born. Anybody can get a library card. And once you have this library card, you can go to the library and check out books and music and videos. You can go to the library and use their computers or find a quiet spot to read or study. And the amazing thing is, it costs absolutely nothing. This is kind of like what God's family is about. If you believe in Jesus Christ and are united with him in baptism, you can become a member of God's family. It doesn't matter the color of your skin, it doesn't matter who your parents are or where you come from. Everybody is welcome. And once you accept Jesus Christ, you can get all the amazing gifts that God has promised to us in his word. We can find those promises in the Bible. And the amazing thing about God's gifts, just like our library card, is that they're free. It's truly a gift of God, a gift a gift of his grace that we become a member of his family. So let us pray. Dear God, thank you for letting us be members of your family through your son Jesus Christ. We are truly grateful for all the amazing gifts that you bless us with. Amen.
verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean, because the word I have spoken to you remain in me as I remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, we will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. You may be seated. This morning we're going to explore the last of Jesus' I am statements. Jesus said, I am the true vine. When Jesus spoke these words, he did not mean that he was a vine. Rather, he was speaking figuratively. That is, he was painting a word picture. So as, as he so often did when he was telling stories, Jesus used hidden messages in his stories as well, just and let people draw their own conclusions. When Jesus spoke about vines and vineyards, the people of his time knew what he was talking about. In Judea, vineyards were prevalent, and grapes were the cash crop of that time, just as corn is one of our cash crops. Vines are very rugged, very rugged crop. But their fruit, my friends, is very delicate. And it requires great care. A young vine is not allowed to bear fruit for the first three years. No, you can't just say to the vine, you can't bear fruit. What do you do? It is pruned very early in the year in order to preserve its energy. Branches do not bear fruit that, are, that do not bear fruit are cut out to conserve the energy of the plant. Vines must be constantly cut back for the crop to reach its potential. You know, Reading these words reminds me of my mom when in the spring of the year she'd be out there trimming bushes and she was pretty wicked with those pruning shears because by the time she was done you were, you were pretty certain that bush would never amount to anything and yet at, in full season it would be bright, big and bushy and look beautiful. When Jesus spoke about vineyards, people could identify with that metaphor. 
just like a corn farmer today, understands the need for spraying the corn crop. It does not matter if you were in that business, if you live in an area where they do that business, you get used to people talking about the kinds of work that needs to be done. Now, I know we don't really cultivate corn anymore because the corn is so close together, you can't do that. But that used to be one of the things that, that you would see in midsummer, with the, the farmers out there pulling a cultivator and working up the soil between the crops, the, the rows of corn. And now you're lucky if you can tell where the row is. In Judea, a vineyard was the symbol of the nation. Just like in the United States of America, some people identify us with those amber waves of grain. Throughout the Old Testament, Israel is pictured as the vine or the vineyard of God. Jesus spoke his last I am statement in the upper room following Jesus, Judas' departure after the Passover meal. Jesus was preparing his disciples for his absence by challenging their understanding in his claim to be the true vine and his father, the vine grower. In his analogy, Jesus likened himself to a vine while the fruit-bearing branches are the disciples. God is depicted as the one who cultivates and waters and tends the soil so that the vine is properly nourished. God takes pride in his crop, just like every farmer takes pride in his or her crop. He prunes the vines and he removes the dead wood while the grapes continue to hang on the branches. In the Christian faith, there is a relationship to Jesus' analogy. Jesus is the true vine, and as members of the Christian faith, we, you and I, are Christ's branches. Each branch must do its part. We must produce fruit, not for our own good, but for the good of the whole, the vine. We are to use the gifts that God has given us to produce those rich, luscious fruits, all for the glory of God. We produce those fruits when we abide in Jesus Christ when we develop a close personal relationship with Christ through prayer and scripture reading, worship and Holy Communion, Christ abides in us. Through the frequent practice of the means of grace, we experience God's presence in our life and we produce good, healthy fruit and become Jesus' disciples. Now think for a moment of the saints who have gone before us and the rich fruit they produced. For example, consider St. Paul. Paul was a former Pharisee Remember, he was out to get those Christians. But he was converted 
on his way to Damascus, where he intended to persecute Christians. But what his, his conversion led him to take bold steps in the name of Jesus Christ. He shocked the church by admitting Gentiles to baptism without being circumcised. And that was a big deal in his time. Paul's faith and his, and his trust in Jesus opened the Christian faith to you and I. On a personal level, when I was thinking about this, I was reminded of my friend Florence, whose compassion for battered women took her on late night journeys into the depths of Fond du Lac County, where she would rescue abused women from her home, their homes and bring them to her own home for safety. I'm certain that you too can think of saints that you have known or know who did or do extraordinary things to help others, not for their glory, but for the glory of God. You know, it is a challenge to maintain an abiding relationship with Jesus in an environment that is materialistic and me-centered. We live that every day, don't we? We're always forced to make some choices. But one thing that can stay steadfast in our focus is if we surround ourselves with others who also abide with Jesus. Because it's through those relationships that we come to bear the fruit and find God's peace. Another word that I'd like to lift up to you today is the word apart. Some people see that word as being painful and harsh. It appears in the fifth verse of today's scripture when Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I and them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. I'm going to repeat that. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. My friends, Jesus' message to his disciples and to us is that we cannot do it alone. We might think we can. Sometimes we might even try to do it that way. But if you want it to be successful, God's got to be a part of the decisions you make and the actions you take. We must trust in him, not ourselves. Branches are meant to bear fruit, and pruning is important to growing fruit. The energy flow through the vines to the branch is what produces the fruit. Gardeners know that. 
And so they're out there with their pruning shears and they cut and they cut and they cut all the unproductive branches away. And the result is very luscious, tasty fruits like apples and pears and grapes and tomatoes and there are lots of others as well. It takes self-control and self-discipline to abide in God. You know, there are very many attractions and distractions in our lives that can separate us from God. And it only takes one incident, and we can easily find ourselves relying on ourselves and not God. And an example that comes to my mind is one Sunday morning you wake up and, well, you don't really want to get out of bed and you don't want to go to church. So you just roll over, pull the covers up, and miss Sunday worship. Well, the next Sunday comes along, and by golly, it felt so good to sleep in last Sunday. Maybe I should do that again. And then it happens again and again and again. And pretty soon, church is the last thing on your mind. And God, you and God are far apart. So it's very important to keep your focus. We need to rely on God. Faithfulness requires self-control and self-discipline. For Christ's church to flourish, the branches must stay connected to the vine. I'm sure that many of you felt in that period of time when you couldn't come into this building, how disconnected you felt. That there were, you wanted to see people or you wanted to be together. And that's a really difficult, that was a very difficult time. And not all churches are open now. And so those people are still experiencing that. So so that leads me to the very last word that I want to bring up today, and that word is ask. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. In other words, what should you be doing? I'm a teacher. I'm looking for an answer. Pray. Pray. And pray and pray and pray. And then when you think you've prayed enough, you need to do it some more. When you pray, always ask in the name of Jesus that his will be done. Because Jesus listens to your prayers. And Jesus answers prayers. But not always in the way you want. But always in the way you need. Pray for those needs. Trust and believe that God will answer your prayers. In summary, what are the three words that you need to remember from this lesson? They all start with A. 
Abide. Yes. Are they up on the screen? Yes. Okay. Well, you know what? Repetition is good. Abide in Jesus. For being apart from him, you can do nothing. And do not hesitate to ask Jesus for whatever you wish. And his will will be done for you. May these words give you strength and encouragement and hope this day and always. Amen. At this Thank mm -hmm. you.